Welcome to the Party Poker World Open 6. 48 of poker's global superstars have descended on the Palm Beach Casino, each hoping to be crowned champion and take home a cool $200,000. There are six heats and the winner goes straight through to the final table, with those who come second getting another chance in the runners-up heat. Who's going to be the next name in our prestigious final? Well, we'll find out tonight as Heat 4 concludes and the action continues. I'd like to cheer you for winning that for you. I can feel you cheering. It's a Fraser. What's happened to you? <laughs> so I don't want to bet. I like my hand. I'll bet on your hand. <laughs> I give up. Mm, I don't know. If you wanted to fire that one more, it might have looked really bad. One for the good guy. If you're going to let him, you just tell me later on. Well, quick all in from Channing, and he's in trouble. And highly unexpected, Neil Channing, the first one out at this final table. Tricky Tricket on the move in the right direction. Sam Trickett, it seems like so many people are talking about both British poker right now and how the Brits are just storming through everything. And also you, you're right up there. People are talking about you and your game. You've gotten fairly unlucky in some key places, but uh, where's poker at for you? Yeah, I'm at my career peak. It's gone really well all year, so but I've had a bit of bad luck on like final tables and deep runs and stuff, but can't really complain. I've had an amazing year, and I, I'm not one to complain about bad beats, so just move on and hopefully my luck will change from here. Would you consider yourself to be a fairly analytical poker player? I'm not really like one of these math guys who like knows the math inside out. My math's a little rusty in poker, to be honest. I always know like what's roughly what I am and stuff like that, but I'm more of a... Um, um, I go with my feel a lot, and um, I know like my board's quite well post flop because like I played a lot, a lot of cash hands, so I like kind of know what I'm doing post flop. Um, kind of. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and uh, I feel like I've, I've got an edge when I play post flop against most people at the minute. Yeah, I think most people think they'd like to play kind of like you. So <laughs> <laughs> congratulations on all your success and good luck out there. Thank you very much. Thanks. You can't keep a good man down. <laughs> From what we've seen in this World Open, Sam Trickett, a very good man. Marty Smith and Dan Fleischman both have more than they started with. Well, blinds are going to go up to seven and 15,000 now. There's three players at this table who can ill afford it, Aikenhead, Yetton, and Atherton. It's about 15 big blinds apiece. Palm Beach Casino, Mayfair, London. A nice address and a nice location. Sam Trickett picks up another nice hand, ace-king. I mean, this thing could be over very fast if Sam Trickett continued his run like this, Mike. Every time he doesn't have much, he manages to flop well or bluff the pot, and he's been getting action on his big hands. And, well, Weissman has gone all well, in and been called by Trickett. 10, 11 times today. And every single time he calls me. Well, Fleischman in dire straits here. It's okay. I'm probably going to hit it because I just had it so many times today. Well, he's, he's put in 300,000 there and gotten quickly called by Trickett. This is not looking good. Well, it's going to have to come Queen-10, 6-6 six, six to get a split. Jack-Jack, but no, an ace comes up. Fleischman drawing dead with one to go. It's Trickett has aces and kings, and he's going to win this pot. Well, handshakes all around. Well, that's the beauty of being known as an action player, Jesse. Trickett was rambling, gambling early on at this table. He was starting to do it again. You pick up an ace jack, you say, hey, chances are this guy can't beat this. I'm going all in. But this time, Trickett had the goods. He had the better hand. It stood up. Now, I happen to know that last night, before you were playing, you were up incredibly, <laughs> incredibly late playing, I think, a cash game or maybe a tournament yeah. here at the casino. Obviously, that didn't affect the ace jack hand, but right. you must be feeling a little tired. Yeah, I'm kind of used to it now, but I played till like 5 or 5.30 in the morning and then got up at 9 to get all pretty for you guys. So <laughs> it was fun, though. I couldn't stop the game. Like, I don't get to play poker often enough to, like, leave when it's, like, prime time. So when guys are playing as crazy as they were, I'm going to play. That's spoken like a true poker player. Thank you very much. Thank you. Fleischman played well tonight. I think slipped on a banana peel in the last. <laughs> well, against aggressive players, you do make raises with those kind of hands. Yeah. It's just that simple. That's true. Certain players, not only wouldn't you raise it, you'd just muck it. But against a guy who plays a lot of pots, raises and re-raises with anything, 
You got to gamble with an ace jack. Pass. So Smith and Jetton in the blinds. Marty's found the ace. Well, this is sure has. Pretty good duke here. Blind on blind, it's probably worth Jetton's whole stack. Right. Oh. 42,000 total. Well, he is going to raise it. Makes it 42,000 to go. This is a trap for Peter Jetton. Can he get out of this one? I'm not sure he can. Oh. Well, that's the first step to not going broke. Well, he's made the call here. Better hope the point doesn't come up. Yeah. And it doesn't. In fact, he's fluffed the best hand now. He's got two sixes as it comes. Nine, six, three. Jetting out in front with the two sixes. And Jetting trying to decide whether to knuckle it or bet on the second pair. Well, I think you have to bet. If the guy's trapping you with a big pair here, good luck to him. But 40, you don't want to give him a free card if he's got king, queen. Queen Jack, Jack 10, something like that. You got to make him pay to beat you. But he has check raised all in, and he is not going to like it because he is dead to a Jack. That is all that's going to do it for him to win this pot. Wow, Marty Smith check raised quickly, and Jetton, he had made up his mind he was going with this hand before he bet Mike. He called that quick. And right now, Marty Smith in dire straits, even if a spade comes up, Jetton will have a bigger flush. He's got to catch a jack to win this pot. Doesn't happen as the four comes off. A big blow right there to Irishman Marty Smith. This Peter Jetton is something else. This kid plays on the edge. <laughs> Look at these chips now. Peter Jetton with 600,000. And I mean, it's hard to say anything, but he earned them. Uh, he's, he's done a lot with what he's got. You came very close to a title quite recently at the Aussie Millions, and that must be both frustrating and, you know, it's a great experience to be on a final table live like that, but how frustrated were you? Well, um, yeah, that, I mean, I, I, luckily I had made some other, like, live final tables before. Coming second uh, to Marty Smythe in the, in the 10K PLO in 2008 was very rough, but... Uh, yeah, this this one, the Aussie Millions. I really thought that I was going to win it. Uh, I think whenever you reach the final table of a major tournament like that, you always think you're going to win. And uh, whenever you know, it didn't happen that time. But um, I'm not I'm not too frustrated by it. Uh, I made a couple other final tables this summer of the series too. So uh, I think that uh, I think that eventually I'll get my titles. <laughs> I think you will. Maybe you'll get your first one here as well. That'd be yeah, nice to see. That would be great. Yes. Well, good luck out there. Thank you. Welcome back. Five ways in this heat. Just about the point, blind-wise, where familiarity with the format is key. Look at Ian Fraser. He may as well be in his living room right now. Over to what Sam Trickett here. We sort of forgot about him lately. There's a couple guys have gotten broke. Here he raises it with the 10 of clubs, makes it 30,000 to go. Be interesting to see, Mike, how Peter Wait. Jetton uses oh. these newfound chips. Yes. Aiken Head has gone all in with a 9 8 of diamonds. Wow. Just incredible. Yes. Classic James Aiken Head, and a very risky spot. Well, just incredible. He's just picked this spot against Trickett. Figuring he wasn't that strong. I think I for like a Moved tenth of all a in with just a nine Six, high there. Four. Just picked up 50K, increased his stack by oh, over 25% there. Well, that shows a lot of heart right there to move all your money in with nine high when the guy in front of you has raised it and he's the chip leader. Pass. I'll tell you, Mike, Pass. nobody even suspects what just happened. That's how smooth <laughs> a thief. James Aikenhead is. Right now, you ask anyone at that table, yeah, he probably had the ace king, maybe the two tens. Around to the battle of the blinds here. 
Well, and Atherton lifts his head, Mikey's going to see a monstrous wall of tricket. He's got the seven nine of diamonds. It's the kind of hand you want to see a flop with. The problem is if you limp in, which is what he's done. Sam Trickett's liable to raise you. I can't believe Sam's going to let him get away with this. It just looks so powerful. Well, Sam's got the jack eight of diamonds. So he's just willing to take a flop. Sam has flopped two eights. He's got second pair. Atherton with the gut shot straight throw. Action on him. He's going to check. Check, check. Yep. Now Trickett checks right behind him. Check second pair. You must think this guy's trapping him some kind of way. A four comes off. <laughs> These guys are seeing something different when they look at Lee Atherton than we are watching the cards under the table, Mike. Now he's going to lead on bet with just a gut shot straight draw. Here Trickett's got second pair and is scared to death. I swear, he's, it looks like he's thinking of passing. Now he's at a guess what as to you, what uh, to do. What do you do with your bracelet? Do you have like a, a displayed oh. somewhere or something? Or? Well, he has made the call. It's a queen. Now, if Aston checks here, he's essentially just waving the flag and say, "You go ahead and take the pot." Well, the pot is now swelled to seventy-eight thousand. Well, he is reaching for chips. Who would have thunk it from this guy? Forty thousand. Forty thousand. Now Trickett's got to think this one through. It it could be a king, Mike, but doesn't look like that much else. Could it be two pair? Well, it's just not that big a bet. King seven, do It's cheap. King seven or king nine. Afford it. Huh? You can afford it. I am not sure Lee should have opened his mouth. Nice call. Oh! Well, you're right. Trickett makes the call and wins the pot with the two eights. I'll tell you, when Atherton opened his mouth to speak, he sounded like a bullfrog who had gotten shot in the throat. He croaked. Uh, King seven, King nine. Got to think about it, then. I'm in it. I'm nice. used to having like set up like some flops with me if I get a few more chips. Yeah, you're right. Cool. Yeah. Stage, yeah. Yeah. I never fold me ever. That's what I was thinking actually when I uh, when he bet. I was thinking he knows I never fold. <laughs> I'm staring at you. Why is he betting? Well, that's that's how the the think here. so. They, you know, <laughs> for a second their brain says, well, they know I'm going to call, so they can't be bluffing me. But you're right. Every time on the river, Trickett's had a tough decision. He has made an amazing call. And he's been right every single time. This hand unlikely to get to a tough river decision. Ace King suited plenty. Well, he's hoping his man Aiken Head goes oh for it here. And with this hand, he could well do it with an ace ten. Well, this might do it for Aiken Head. I think he's going to move all in over the top and be insta called and then be in dire straits. All in. Cool. All in. I knew you had it. I knew you had it. Why did you go all in then? <laughs> All right, so sick. <laughs> you can't fold him for making that play, though. I would have done the same thing in this spot, in this position, against this aggressive player. Jack, Queen, King. Just amazing. Every time Trick has needed to pick up a hand, he's done it. But now, will it hold up? That's the question. Oh, no, oh. it's come King, Queen, Jack. Aikenhead has oh flopped God. the stone blooded yeah, nuts. He's oh, got the I ace high straight. That. That's incredible. <laughs> These guys are great friends off before. the felt, but I'll tell you, on the felt right know. now, Trickett is thinking, yeah. this kid, yeah. this guy. Yeah. Well, Aikenhead can't lose the pot. He tied if a 10 comes off. Six comes off. And there was some good luck for Aiken Head there, no doubt about it. Oh, man. Stop slow rolling next time, just put the money in as well. Uh, really. <laughs> Obviously, it's just a snapshot. Yeah. Aiken Head getting the better end of the deck there, so but there's plenty to more to his game you than blind luck. Your mom was somewhere else. In 2009, I had quite a few results. It was obviously a great year for me uh, in regards to poker. 
Um, I went to the World Series. Um, didn't do that great in, in the uh, side events, but in the main event, I went on to make the final table, which is obviously just a massive, a massive thing. This year at the World Series, I wrote on my Facebook before the, even the first event started. I said this will be the greatest year for the Brits in the, in the world in the history of the World Series of Poker, and um, and they go on and get um, how many bracelets and seconds and final tables and, and they absolutely tore it up. Um, and I predicted that, and I think it will just get bigger, bit, uh, better and better for the UK guys. Uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, Toby Lewis and Jay Cody, I think their friends, uh, won simultaneous WPT and EPTs, and Jay Cody, I think, has already won a WPT. So it goes to show you there's a, there's a group of uh, really good players from the UK, and, um, and they expect big things from them in 2011. Obviously, I just want to win a bracelet. I would love to win an EPT, um, even though I don't get a chance to play money because I'm always preoccupied with the tournaments elsewhere at the same time, it turns out. but. Um, no, I want to play as many bracelet events in, in the future as I can, and EPTs and WPTs, and try and get one of those big titles under my name. Um, winning the Poker Million was great, it really was, because I've watched that program for years at home and stuff, and to go on my first ever time and win, win it was great. But um, to win a bracelet, I think, is what I want to do in the next couple of years. Well, what an incredible turnaround for James Aikenhead. Can't get past you, though, some Dominated <laughs> before no the flop there, flopping the nuts. Pass. And on the verge of extinction, now the chip leader. Well, timing is everything. Yeah. And so far, Aikenhead's timing's been perfect. When to play and when not to, even when he's got the worst of it. All in. Well, here goes Atherton. He's going all in here with just a jack high. Sam Trickett's got a tough decision. He's got the A7 115,115. It's only 115,000, but after you just lost the last pot and double up an opponent, do you really want to double up another one right here? Well, he's going all in. Going to shut out the blinds here anyway. And what a play by Sam Trickett. Again, he's made the right decision here. Might not win the pot, but give him kudos for picking off his man here and realizing he didn't have that strong a hand. We see it again and again. The truly great players, if they see an edge, if they see an opportunity, they're not gonna let it go by. They get on that bus, and look, Trickett's gonna get paid here. Yep, and Ace comes right off on the flop. Either they're gonna have to catch two running cards to win this pot. Two runners to make a straight, or two running combinations of a jack and a 10. Doesn't happen. Six comes off on the turn, it is over. I'll play, fellas. And that's gonna do it. For Lee Atherton. Good showing here. This young man's first time on TV. Well, as you said, he's gained a lot of experience today. Truthfully, up against better competition. Still fought hard. Wasn't meant to be, but I guarantee you, he's going to learn from today. The last hand was kind of a sick, uh, very, very much a PLO hand, you know. We, uh, we both got it all in with the nuts, and he had a free roll and got me. And Fraser, he's not on the short stack, but this game has morphed into three big stacks and two smaller ones. And Mike, I think Fraser's going to be on tap to double up here. Well, it's 35,000 for Trickett to call, but he's got Ace Jack suited. And you're right, he could well go over the top of Fraser here. Ace, Queen, and Ace Jack both well above average in a five handed game. Well, he's re-raised to 80,000. And this could be the opportunity Frazier's looking for. Indeed, he's going all in right here. Well, Trickett not happy about it, but he makes the call. You got me. It's ace-queen versus ace-jack. Ian Frazier in great shape to double up here. Bambity bam and Sam Trickett, who's been going so well, loses the big all in to James Aikenhead, and now, if Fraser takes him out. Well, comes ace, eight, do So far, so good for Frazier. Both have a pair of aces. Frazier has him out kicked, however. Four diamonds comes off. We are down to the river. Sam Trickett must catch a jack to eliminate Ian Frazier from this tournament. Doesn't happen as the six comes off. So a nice double up by Ian Frazier there. And he is happy about it. Yeah, come on the Razor. That's what he's saying on the inside right now. Ian will feel well in this game. Third position, but the truth is, the top four, there's not a hair's breadth between them. 
Well, you're right. Four guys with a lot of chip. Marty Smith on the short stack, but as you pointed out, Jesse, nobody plays a short stack better than Marty Smith. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Fair enough. Aiken had on the button. Looking down at the two eights. Yep. He's going to raise it here. And Marty picking up another one of those hands where you got a tough decision for all your all chips. In. He's gone all in here with the A7. Well, he's going to get action here. I have no doubts about that. Jetting going out of the way, but Aikenhead quickly calling him with the two snowmen. He's trying to melt Marty out of here. Trouble for Marty Smith. He's down to the bullet. As the cards lie, Aikenhead about a 70% favorite to win this pot and eliminate Marty Smith from this tournament. A good flop for Aikenhead as it comes jack 9-3. An ace on the turn. Marty Smith has taken the lead here. Aikenhead must catch an eight on the river. Doesn't do it as another ace comes up. Incredible. Marty Smith staying alive, and he is tough to get out. Marty Smith, he's hanging in and thriving. Yeah. Yeah. Join us after the break for more action from the World Open. Welcome back. It's five-handed and Mike, it really shouldn't be. There's not enough chips in play for this blind level. Between the first stack and the fourth stack, it's only one breath. Well, he's raised it to 40,000 with the Ace-8 offsuit. That's Jetton I'm talking about. Folded around to Aikenhead in the small blind. He's got the five high is all he's got. He's going away. And Marty Smith looks down at the queen eight. He is dominated. Cool. But he's going to make a call here. I didn't expect that. And so Smith getting the price, opted to make the call. He's going to have to get lucky to win it. That's not going to do it. As Jet and his paired aces on the board. Smith in trouble. Check. He's got a chance for a 10 in the belly. Well, he does. That's because Jetton checked and he hit it. Can you believe he's made the queen high straight here? He is going to win this pot. This is unbelievable. Jetton did not make the continuation bet trying to trap him. And what he's done is trap himself and going to hang himself here. Mike, I don't know if this was a mistake or if Jetton just got unlucky, but the plain fact of the matter is it's ugly now. Cool. He's gonna make the call here, drawing dead to win, could tie if a queen comes up. Well, the board pairs tens. These guys have history, and the history is Marty Smith treats Peter okay. Jetton like a cash machine. Well. Jetton can blame nobody but himself for losing this pot. He made the minimum raise to start with. That lured the blind in. Then he gave him the free card on the flop where he hit the gut shot straight. And Jetton is going to be lecturing himself after this pot is over. Funny thing is, Jetton, he says, I don't think I can fold his hand. If he had named one river card he absolutely did not want to see, it would have been the ten of clubs. That's what's Especially popped up. I don't really beat any value that hands. Right about that. Well, doesn't beat any value bad hands, he says. But he's calling anyway. It's a curiosity call, and he is not going to like it when he sees what he was up against here. Wow. Yeah, that's sick. Well, he Sorry. says, wow, but. I think you were still playing the flop when got lucky there, yeah? It's one of those cases that you can't blame anybody but yourself for losing that pot, Jesse. As a poker player, you got to take the heat and put it on yourself when you misplay a pot. He misplayed it by not betting the flop there, and it cost him. And for Marty Smith, how many times, Mike, is Marty Smith going to bounce back from a short stack to be a threat? 
This guy shouldn't start playing until he's got five big blinds. It's starting to feel like if the guys all go through a bit of a dry spell, Aikenhead is going to go into gear. You know, Marty Smith picks up king nine in a small blind and just calls, doesn't raise with it. Peter Jetton has got the walking sticks. He's got a pair of sevens. He must raise here, but how much? I'm just very surprised that Marty Smith didn't raise first. Well, that's why he didn't raise first. He's going to come back over the top here. Cool. And he's been called. And Marty's got to feel like he's in the best spot possible in a race situation after he gets all the chips out there. I was hoping for the for the ace, you know, the ace six or something. Well, Marty Smith with a king nine. Flop comes Jack A3. So far, so good for Jetton. His two sevens are out in front. Now the jack comes off. Now if an eight comes off, that would win the pot also for Marty Smith. So he needs an eight, a nine, or a king. And it's a nine. He has done it. He has hit a river card to win yet another pot. And Peter Jetton is going to be out of here in fifth place. My, ne my nemesis. I had no chance from the beginning. Good game. See you guys. Good luck. See you, Peter. And we've just lost Peter from the game. Now, aside from Marty, who you've obviously played against quite a lot, you've not really played against the other guys much, have you? Uh, no, not too much. Uh, Marty seems to be my nemesis. But uh, yeah, the other guys, it was a new experience playing with them. And uh, it was a lot of fun. What were your thoughts about the play at the table and some of the players that are left still? Um, I, everybody was, was playing all right. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I had a great seat in the game and, uh, and a pretty good spot. And I got myself into a lot of great situations, but uh, it didn't work out that well for me after the money got in. Sometimes the cards just don't go your way, and it's not your day. It's unfortunate. Thank yeah, you very that's much. That's true. Thanks. Yet in finding Marty a bit of a poker nemesis. First, Marty knocked him out in the 45. final for a World Series of Poker bracelet. Now the world open. Thinking, wherever I go, Marty Smith is there. Well, Frazier is raised here with the King Jack of Hearts. I don't see Sam Trickett going anywhere here. I look for him to come over the top, in fact, with the two nines. He covers Fraser by about 140K. I think he's trying to just talk himself, just seeing if there's anything but an all in that he can find here. He's found a half raise. Raise. I don't really know what the intention of that so is. 1.5. Pa. Pa. How many more? Well, the re raise is 125,000. So well, it's only an $80,000 raise here. And as you said, a couple hundred thousand in the pot. Well, he's presented Fraser with a couple of different options. Fraser can convince himself that if he shoves all in, Trickett will fold some hands. I don't know if it's true or not. I think it's tough to lay this down for 80000 He's going to make the call. Oh, I think that's a re-raise. Oh, it indeed is a re-raise. Has to be double the bet, so another 25. And well, it's just a minimum re-raise. It's it's the it, it look now Fraser is making it look like he's got the aces. Raise to 250. He's giving Trickett something to think about. All in. All in. Well, Trickett's going all in here. <laughs> And now Ian Frazier, I believe, is completely pot committed. I mean, oh yeah, 800 and some thousand in the oh, pot yeah. right now. There's no bubble here. We're not on the bubble for third or fourth. I mean, well, uh, he's only got a couple hundred thousand left. Getting four to one on his money here. You know, this is essentially going to be a pot to see who's going to have a very strong chance for heads up, and Ian knows it. Well, you got to call here just because of the price you're getting. Whether you like it or not doesn't matter. And as the cards lie, Ian Frazier's got to be very happy with what he sees here, the under pair. Sure. Look at this pot, a million strong. Trickett's got 100K back or so. Well, it's a race situation, and I believe if Trickett loses this pot, he's only going to blame himself for making that minimum raise a minute ago. You're right, Mike. 
And it's come ace, four, seven, all spades. Trickett has the nine of spades. That takes two of Frazier's outs. The king of spades and jack of spades won't help him now. He's down to four outs. Well, that gives him a straight draw. Gives him three more outs. Any 10 other than the 10 of spades will win it for him as well. Well, an ace comes. So that's going to do it for Ian Frazier. But a daring min raise by Trickett there. He put himself in jeopardy when I believe had he moved all in over the top, I don't think Ian Frazier can then call I with the King Jack. Much. So a monster pot right there for Sam Trickett. He is going to vault to the chip lead in dominating fashion. And we've lost Ian Fraser from our table now. And what a tough table it's been and some really good play out there too. How yeah. are you feeling about your own? Yeah, I thought I played all right. You know, um, it was a tough table, extremely tough. I, I fancied Sam always sort of played the best of everyone, um, the way the game was going, uh, for sure. He, he was bossing the table. He took a couple of knockbacks, uh, but it didn't stop him. He just he carried on firing. So. But I was happy with the way I played, just a bit unfortunate. You know, that was a massive hand. Um, Sam's got all the chips now, or, or I could have had all the chips. It was, I think the pot was for about a million. So, um, well, commiserations. Yeah. That is a tough one, and thanks yeah, very much. Thank <laughs> Three-handed now, Mike, and Aiken had the short stack on about 400. Marty's got about oh. 800K. Trickett with a, a million. No, Trickett. Just won the race to knock Ian Frazier out to take the chip lead here. Let's see if he can go on across the finish line. Well, Aiken head raising with the ace three fast. here. Pass. Trick it with just a 10 deuce offsuit. He just couldn't pick up a much worse hand. Christ. Incredibly, he is raising here. To 105. With absolute junk. A lot of pressure on Aiken Head now. You had an ace high. You think it's not bad up against the blinds, and all of a sudden the guy comes back over the top of you. You just hate ace three in this spot. Aiken Head lays it down. What can you say about Tricky Trickett? To make that kind of move with a 10-deuce offsuit, that is startling poker. I agree, Mike. And it looked a lot like the raise he did against Fraser with the two nines. So he's mixing it up. You didn't know what. No one can know what he has. He can head on the button. He always seems to squeeze a good one first. This time, the second <laughs> one agrees. He can hit with the queen jack. Not a bad hand in a three-handed poker game. He's gone all in. Straight all in. Marty Smith goes out. Cold. And he's been cold. Sam Trickett has two nines. And we have another race situation. Remember, he broke Ian Frazier out of this tournament when he had two nines against the King Jack of Hearts of Ian Frazier. Here, the same scenario. It's the two overcards versus the underpair. Can he win another race with these nines? Well, the, the nines have been cast iron throughout this heat. And they continue their dominance. Well, they do. It's a 7 6 on the flop. So Trickett got to dodge a queen or a jack or two running cards to make a straight. Well, a four comes off. We are down to the river. James Aikenhead must catch a queen or a jack or he'll be out in third place. Doesn't happen as the board pair aces. The two nine stand up once again and all the races going Trickett's way right now. Aikenhead is our bubble boy. James Aiken had showed his class on this table, but cards did not cooperate in the end of matters. Is it quite a frustrating day? I mean, it's a difficult table. It was a very difficult table and very frustrating. Um, I didn't really get a hand all day. I picked up a pair of queens early on. They won me a few chips, but not too many. Um, since that, every time I pick up anything, I run into a bigger hand, and I'm just having to make good folds. Um, when I got it. I got unlucky with Ace Ten versus Ace King. Uh, there was another spot where I couldn't fold, and but I sucked out. But this time I got it in with Queen Jack. I stand to like 14 bigs and saw two picture cards, so shoved and no luck. Unfortunate situation. Better luck next time. Thank you. Cheers.
Welcome back to the World Open Six at the Palm Beach Casino. We're heads up, so let's get back to the table and find out who goes through to the final table and who has to battle it out in the runners-up heat. This has been a tough old road to hoe, and it's not going to get any easier. Marty Smith has had to grind and bump around. Sam Trickett, he's had a good run. Look at his V-chip, his steal attempts. He's picked up a few good cards as well, Mike, just when he needs them. And here he looks down at King Eight of Clubs. That figures to be favored over a random two card hand. 60,000 total. So he's going to make it 60,000 to go. And Marty Re Smith is going to re raise it with a Queen Jack. Same hand that Aikenhead just got knocked out on. A Queen Jack. He's going to put the pressure on Trickett here. I'll tell you something, Mike. Sam Trickett. Very good tournament player. That's what he does all the time. Marty Smith's a good tournament player too, but his bread and butter game when he came up, Smith, was head up. And uh, he is about as comfortable here as you can be. Head up cash, head up tournaments. So uh, this is not unfamiliar territory. The shorter it's gotten, the more Marty's liked it. Well, that was a strong play by Marty Smith right there. He re-raised there and got his opponent to lay down the best hand. Well, Marty Smith, another nice hand here. This time better than before. He's got King Queen of Hearts. And he's raising on the button. 90,000. But Sam Trickett has picked up another ace high. Oh, boy. He could well go all in right here. Well, we can see it all go in. It's all very right. very tough to fold the King Queen suited, isn't it? All in. Well, he has gone all in. So he is going to put the pressure on Marty Smith. And I don't see how you can lay this hand down heads up. I just don't. <laughs> Yeah, well, Marty chuckling because he doesn't see how you can lay it down either. Looks like a pocket deuces laugh. Hey? Looks like a pocket deuces laugh, that one. Yeah, it's not really. Like, I can't see me being far behind, that's the thing. I think you're, I think you're maybe marginally in front, but if you've ace right. 10 or something, I'm, I'm getting a well, press call. He's got it red spot on, yeah, does he? It could be 50-50 easily. He said it might be 50-50. I think you might be slightly ahead with the ace high. That's, that's exactly the case. Mike, he is allergic to call. Thank you. You're there slightly, front, slightly in front or it's 50-50. I'll call you. Call. Yep, he's going to make the call. Call in and a call. Well, he read it perfectly. As the cards lie, he is a slight underdog. No question about it, but you can't blame him for putting in it with the king, queen, arts. I'd have done the same thing, especially against Sam Trickett, who's capable of making that play with an eight high. You can't be scared to gamble in this format. Marty Smith ain't, but he's behind. Well, he flopped the king right on the flop. He's now in front. Trickett did flop a pair of sixes, but he's going to have to catch an ace or a six or two running cars to make it straight. Seven comes on the turn. We're down to the river. Sam Trickett must catch an ace or a six to win this heat right here, right now. Doesn't happen as a 10 comes off. So Marty Smith making the call to win that pot. Getting lucky right there. He's gotten lucky on several occasions at this final table, especially when he got down to like 100,000 in chips when all the players were left in the tournament. He has come back to take a dominating chip lead in heads up play right now. He certainly has, and there's not much in it right now. 1.5 million for Marty. Sam Trick, a little roll reversal. Now he's got about 800K. Game back on. Both these guys have sort of similar approaches to this stage of the tournament. Now well, Marty Smith going to raise it here and not going anywhere with a pair in heads up poker. To 85,000 total. And let's see what Trickett does here with the king five of spade. All in. Well, he's gone all in. Well, I believe Marty Smith's got to go for it here. If he wins this pot, he'll be the champion. If he doesn't, he'll just have to climb back from a deficit again. Yeah, I call. Call. I hope a 50-50. Probably take a 50-50 against the Jules. Marty knows it. He's made the call. <laughs> I would have called there as well. Now he's got to try to win the race. If he does so, he'll be our champion. Little smile from Trickett. Is it a race? Just, he said. I just got that over card barely <laughs> covered. And, uh, but, of course, Marty's got the chips back. And Trickett's whiffed the flop. Well, it's come 9-7 deuce. 
Marty Smith out in front with the two fours. If he can skate by the turn of the river, he'll be our champion. Well, a nine comes off. That means if a seven comes off, Trickett would win the pot with a bigger kicker. Or a spade. There's a flush draw out there. So he needs a spade, a seven, a king. All those cards will win it for him. Doesn't happen. He does get it. A seven comes off. It's nines and sevens with a king kicker. That's going to win the pot for Sam Trickett. Incredible. Can be more specific? <laughs> and Jesse, what can you say about this guy? When he had the underpair in the two races to knock out Ian Frazier and Aikenhead, that stood up. Now he's got the two overcards against the underpair. He won the flip side of that as well. Every race going to Sam Trickett in this final table. Well, when you play good, you deserve a little good. And Sam Trickett, he lost the last all in when he had Marty Smith all in. So maybe they're even now. Who knows? Neither player did anything wrong, and so far it feels like a tie. <laughs> Both players now have been a flop turn and river away from sitting at that final table. Well, Sam Trickett's got the 9 6 offsuit. Yeah. He's going to try to raise it here. Race to 80. Knows if his opponent plays the pot, he's probably going to shove all his chips in there. Well, I'm wrong again. Yeah. Marty Smith just going to call with the king eight here. And I'm a little so why? Why has he decided to change tactics? Well, could be stop and go. Now it's come ace 10 three. Okay. His problem is he didn't hit the flop. If he checks, good chance Trickett's going to make the continuation bet and win the hand. Trickett's trying to figure out exactly what Marty would be. Well, it's Colin come was. all clubs on the flop, so Trickett does have a flush draw. I think the decision that Sam Trickett's going to make is I don't know what he got, but I'm going to bet anyway. Pass. Well, that's the problem. Marty Smith didn't play back before the flop. He had the best hand, would have won the pot. When you just call in that spot, you're leaving it all up to the poker <coughs> gods to let you hit a flop. 70% of the time you don't hit a flop. That's what happened there. That's why Marty Smith lost that pot. Well, Sam Trickett is going to go with this hand, that's for sure. He's got the queen nine of diamonds. All in. He's gone all in. And Marty Smith has got the ace three of clubs. He's got a call with the ace high. So Marty out in front right here. But not by much, Mike. Trickett will think this is a great chance for him to hit that final table. He's been the story this entire heat. He's played great. He's gone up. He's gone down. Is this his time now to take it on home? Well, he's won three good races so far. Can he get lucky one more time? And he has. A queen comes right on the flop. Marty Smith has flopped a straight draw. He needs a five or an ace. A five would give him a straight. An ace would give him the best hand. Well, a six comes off. We're down to the river card. Marty Smith must catch an ace or a five, or Sam Trickett's going to be our champion. Well, the river bricks. It blanks out. And Trickett, happy that it bricked it. Well, tough luck for Marty Smith there. Lost the key race. Lost when he was favored with the ace high. You just have to feel this entire heat was destiny for Sam Trickett. Second place, Marty Smith now has a second chance in the runners-up heat, so it's not over, but it must have just been heart in your mouth time when your pair was counterfeited in that, you know, almost the last hand. Yeah, it's pretty tough whenever you, you're that close to the finishing line. And um, I mean, in fairness, he had a lot of us by the time we got to the, the river, so it wasn't a foregone conclusion. But uh, yeah, you just think in one time, kind of. Mm. A good player as well, Sam. Yeah, I think, I mean, I don't think I deserved to win. I had to, I had to hit a three-outer to stay in the thing, whereas Sam seemed to be playing pretty solid the whole way through. He even had a bad beat in earlier on, so I have to concede I think he deserved to win, yeah. Taking down this heat, Sam, well done. It seems like pretty much everyone going out was saying, you know, Sam's in there playing really well, playing really good poker. How did you feel about your play? Yeah, I thought I played too well. I didn't make many mistakes. Um, obviously, I was getting a lot of cards pre-flop as well. It's like easy to play well when you're getting good cards, so... Um, I felt, felt like I made some good decisions and um, didn't do too much wrong and 
like I say, it's easy to play well when you're getting in nice spots and getting nice cards. And looking forward now to the final. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. Um, hopefully I'll run as good as that in the final and you never know. You never know. Could be a title as well in, in your future. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Congratulations to Sam Trickett. He takes his seat in the final and to Marty Smith who gets a second chance in the runner-up heat. Join us next time as another eight take to the felt and egos collide and chips fly here at the Palm Beach Casino. I think you have a nice pair. Oh, sexy. Thank you. Thank you. That's too easy. I have the nuts. What a fish cake. Maybe I win it anyway, if I miss. I'm running too good. You're not running that good. There's only one bad thing. She speaks too much. I'm psychic, but there's so much static going on in my head. Wow.